Hey guys, it's Charlotte here from charlotteohara.ca and in this video tutorial we're going to be talking all about keywords and how they relate to Squarespace SEO. So if you're new around here, welcome. I am a Squarespace web designer but more importantly I'm one of the top experts on Squarespace SEO. So I work with SEO day in day out. I've worked with tons of small business owners, website owners, um, all of those kinds of things. The people that are trying to get a hand on SEO and master it so that they can grow their website and grow their business. And I have noticed in my experience that keywords, for some reason, even when I just say the word keywords, it like brings a sense of fear and anxiety to a lot of my clients and to my audience. And people seem to have this really um, incorrect, in my opinion, view that keywords are really hard to understand. They're a very confusing topic when in fact, they're actually quite a simple process. So my goal with this video tutorial and the blog post that goes along with it, which you can read, is to show you about keywords and let you know exactly what role they play in Squarespace SEO so that you can be confident when you're using them on your own Squarespace website and you can start seeing some really good results with SEO. Okay, so let's talk about keywords. So one of the first things that you're probably wondering is like, what is a keyword? So basically all it is, it's a word or a phrase either used on its own or grouped together that you're going to be using or incorporating in some way on your website. So keywords are one of the biggest pillars of SEO and it's basically, like I mentioned, it's part of the content on your website. So whether it's on a web page or in a blog post, an image name or description, the product description, all of those different things. And keywords are a way of indicating and connecting the content of your website and making sure that that content shows up in Google search results. So you think about it, right? Like if someone opens Google and they type something in, like they're probably typing in some form of a keyword, whether it's like a word or a phrase, something like that. And if a website is using those keywords in the content of the website, then Google is going to make that connection and will show it in the search results somewhere. So Google and like other search engines, like we think of Bing or, you know, Yahoo or whatever, they're going to be crawling and indexing all of the pages that exist on the internet. So when they're crawling all of these pages, like yours included, they're going through evaluating what all of the content is and they're putting, they're using the keywords as indicators. And then from there, they put all of that content as a marker inside their keyword based indexes. So rather than storing everything in like one giant place, like, you know, think about the millions and millions of websites out there and all the pages and stuff, they break it down into smaller databases based on the keywords. Okay. Um, you, if, you think, if it helps you, you can think about it kind of like the way we store files on like a computer. So, you know, you wouldn't just save everything straight up onto like the desktop of your computer. Like, no, hopefully, <laughs> you know, you would want to organize it in some way. So break it down using folders or subfolders, using certain words, things like that. So again, like that's all the keywords are. They're basically just words that you're using on your website and you're making sure that you use keywords to clearly indicate what the content is so that Google can show your website in search results for those specific terms. So let's move on now that you kind of understand what they are. Let's talk about the fact that keywords fall into two types of keywords. So first of all, we've got something called head keywords. And these are basically just short terms that have a large search volume and they're targeting a very large audience. So you might think of something like shoes or lawyers or designers, like that is an example of a head keyword. And obviously because they're so broad and they're targeting such a wide audience, those types of keywords are going to be much harder to rank for. But let's talk about the flip side of that is something called long tail keywords and long tail keywords are considerably easier to rank for. I'm not saying that they are easier, to, easy to rank for, but they're easier to rank for. And this would be something that's much more descriptive. You're use, usually using like a, a combination of words, so multiple words together to make a phrase, and it's targeting much more specific search queries. So, you know, a couple examples might be like Squarespace, or sorry, SEO focused Squarespace web designer or intellectual property lawyer in Los Angeles, something like that, like much more specific. Um, so again, if you want to, if you're trying to figure out like what kind of keywords to include on your website, it makes much more sense to go after long tail keywords because they're going to be easier 
to rank for. So again, when in doubt, niche down and get really specific with the keywords that you're including on your Squarespace website. Let's talk next about something called keywords and search intent. So think about like, you know, when you're brainstorming the kind of keywords that you're going to be including on your website, think about like what kind of stuff are people typing into Google? And you know, those are kind of the phrases or keywords that you should be using and trying to connect that type of keyword with the content on your website. So when you're brainstorming these list of keywords, take into consideration stuff like word order or spelling or synonyms, punctuation, capitalization, acronyms, like all of those different things. So if you're, you know, think about what someone is searching, what their goal is, and what they would be typing into Google to find the kind of content that exists on your website. And that's basically what you're going for. Once you've gotten really specific about the kind of keywords that you're going to be using and you know how people are searching for that, those keywords so that they can then be connected to the content on your website, the next thing to think about is how those keywords are going to convert. So again, we mentioned that long tail keywords are probably going to convert better than like the shorter head keywords. And that's because they're, you know, people know a lot more what they're looking for. There's much more intent behind those keywords. And you can also probably get them later in something what we call the conversion cycle. And this is really useful, especially if you want to take it to your advantage, because it can be helpful if you're trying to ramp up your SEO efforts to like grow your online business or get more sales of certain products that you sell on your website or book more of your services on your website, things like that, right? So if you're targeting the long tail keywords, which are much more specific, you can ideally convert them higher, whether that's clicking over onto your website or then following through with your call to action to do more. So I wanna give you an example here. So think about if someone is searching for a term like boots, like that's gonna be really broad and hard for you to rank for. But if someone types in something like the black 505, um, sorry, like 5050 Stuart Weitzman boots. Like you might've seen these or like every fashion biddy has them. I personally, I love mine, <laughs> but these are much more specific. And so if someone's typing this in, you know, maybe on your website, you're including that in a roundup of like the best boots or something like you would have a better odd of ranking for a keyword like this than you would from someone who's just typing in boots. And ideally, again, it could convert more because they would be le more likely to visit your site and click through, but then also you might even be able to get them later in the buying process and maybe you could make some affiliate money or something like that through it. Okay, so now we know a bit more about like what keywords are, what kind of keywords we're aiming to use on a website, but now let's talk about how we're actually going to be using them on our Squarespace website. So I'm not here to give you like the commandments of keywords, like no, I'm here to give you kind of an outline that you can use and see the different places that keywords are used on your Squarespace site. So remember that it's important to think about like the keywords that someone is typing into Google, but then incorporating that into the content of your website. So we're going to be talking about keywords that are used in different places, for example, like the pages of your website, but then also like your blog posts or product descriptions or the images, things like that. Um, remember, you're using these keywords as cues for Google so that they can then show you in search results for those keywords. Okay, so we've got a couple of ideas here and I've, I've made a little list, so I want to quickly talk about them you know, first of all, like where you would be putting something. So first off, you might want to talk about keywords in the page title. So like your about page, your home page, or maybe you have a whole page on, you know, like yoga mats or something like that could be an example. We also are talking about the SEO title and description fields on each page. So let me show you what I mean here. So let's go back. I've logged into my site. Um, let me click over to one of the pages of my website. Oh yeah, okay, so let's show you on the example of my free course, so my free email course here. Um, if I click on the page settings and I open it up, you know, there's the SEO tab here. So if I click on this, you can see here that in the SEO tab, there's the optional title field, but then there's also the SEO description field. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you're filling these sections out and trying to incorporate the keywords into the SEO um, title and descriptions on each of the pages on your website. So we'll take a bit of time, but it's definitely worth doing for maximum SEO efforts. Okay, 
Um, we're also talking about like the headers that you're using on either a blog post or on a web page, things like that. So, you know, here's an example of a header or, you know, I've got another header down here. So I'm including the keywords there. We're also including keywords within the actual body content of either the web page or the blog post, the product description, whatever it is. Another thing to consider is images, like how you're using keywords in the image title and description field. And again, if you just click through that link, I've got lots of information there. Um, the URL and the permalink is important. So let's say I'm going back over to the example of my launch your best site one. So if you're on the basic tab, you can see that I have a field here called URL slug, and that's what you're going to want to fill out. So try to incorporate the keyword into that URL, like permalink or URL slug. Uh, link anchor text, um, that's just basically like a fancy way of saying, you know, like this here is an example of a link anchor text, you know, so it's text on a website or web page, blog post, whatever, um, and you're trying to be descriptive. So instead of just saying like, click here, you know, trying to like be a bit more descriptive about it, like information or like, yeah, here's a good example here, like right above. So like page titles or something that's a bit more descriptive. And then if the person were to click through, it gives them more information all about Squarespace page titles. And then finally product or event descriptions. So any kind of offering that you're selling on your website. So as I mentioned, keywords are used strategically in so many different places on your Squarespace website. And once you know what keywords you're targeting, you know, you have an idea of what people are looking for and you can connect that to the content of your website, then you can start either creating content to support, um, you know, creating content around those keywords, or you can go ahead and start incorporating those keywords into existing content on your website. So just going in and refining the content a little bit more to make it much more useful and able to be connected by like Google search or any other search engine. All right, so once you've done that, once you've decided, okay, I know what keywords I'm using, I've either added lots of new content to the website or you've beefed up the existing content to include those targeted keywords, something you might wanna go ahead and do is request a re-index of your Squarespace website. And that's just a fancy way of saying like, Google, go ahead and crawl my, the content of my website again so that you're picking up all of those keywords that I'm using. And again, we're doing this so that we can improve the rankings and where you're showing up in search results for those specific keywords. So it's not actually a very hard thing to do. Just follow through with the instructions on like making sure that your website is verified with Google Search Console. And again, if you're reading this blog post, just click through the link here and I've got lots of information for you there. All right, and that is everything. That's your very first lesson all about keywords. The next step is would be to go through and read this blog post, which is here's why you should avoid keyword stuffing if you want to master Squarespace SEO. So it's one thing to learn about keywords, but it's another to go overboard and stuff it. So don't do that. Go through, watch my video tutorial or read this next blog post. I've linked to it in the description box. You can check it out there. So thank you so much for watching this video all about keywords and how they relate to Squarespace SEO. I really appreciate it. And I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something today. If you did like it, you can make sure to give it a thumbs up or you can even hit the subscribe button. Um, if you want to, you can leave me a question or a comment down below. I'd really love to hear from you. Anything from feedback or sharing your experience, including keywords on your Squarespace website. If you've learned a little bit more about keyword SEO, anything like that. I'd love to hear from you. If you go over to my website, which is charlotteohara.ca, I have a whole tab up here in the top menu called Squarespace SEO. And if you click on here, the first thing you'll see is my free Squarespace SEO checklist. And again, it's a free download. It's literally helped thousands of people just begin with Squarespace SEO. So check that out, you know, on my website. I also have lots of blog posts that you can read all about more things on Squarespace SEO. I also have some video trainings, which you might find really helpful. And then also I offer Squarespace SEO audits and consulting sessions. So if that's something you're interested in, you can learn more through here on the Squarespace SEO page of my website. And the last thing I wanted to point out for you is that I also have a free course here. 
and it's called Launch Your Best Site. And Launch Your Best Site is a free email course all about how to build and launch a Squarespace website. You can access it again on my website here, just sign up for it. Um, I've also linked to it down in the description below this video. So you can get that and check it out. Um, finally, I've got a blog section as well as tons of other videos on my YouTube channel. And if you're interested in learning more content about Squarespace or SEO, website design and development, online business, any other tech tips, I've got you completely covered both on my blog and on my YouTube channel. And that's it. <laughs> Everything there, tons of information all about keywords, Squarespace SEO, and a whole lot more. So thank you again for watching. Let me know what you think, and I will talk to you soon. Bye now.